Hello students. This week in lab, we're going to talk about special stains. We're going to specifically talk about endospore staining and capsule staining. And this is an image right here of an endospore stain. So a special stain, we usually do it to observe one special structure about those bacteria cells. Um, there are three types, endospore stain, capsule stain, and flagella stain, but we're not going to be talking about flagella stain in this video. The two that we're going to concentrate on is the endospore stain and the capsule stain. Now, before I explain to you the endospore staining procedure, um, let's just refresh our memory. We talked about it in lecture, but let's just refresh our memory about endospores. So uh, which bacteria cells would produce endospores, young bacteria cells or old bacteria cells? The answer is old bacteria cells. So um, old bacteria cells will produce endospores. But again, not all bacterial species will produce endospores. Some of them still don't, even though they're old. But um, if the bacteria has the capability of producing endospores, it will usually produce it when the bacteria is either old or when the bacteria is feeling threatened um, because it doesn't have enough nutrients or because it's facing such harsh environmental conditions, then the bacteria is going to be triggered to go ahead and produce those spores. And these endospores, we call them endo because they're going to be produced inside of the bacteria cell. Um, they're kind of like time capsules. Um, so the endospore is going to stay dormant. You know, um, eventually the bacteria is going to die. But the endospore is going to stay dormant. And um, once the bacteria or once that endospore kind of feels that, okay, um, it has enough nutrients, the conditions are okay, then that endospore is going to grow back into the vegetative bacteria. So um, how do we perform an endospore staining procedure? Well, the very first steps is to go ahead and prepare a bacteria smear. So on a slide, after you've cleaned it and everything and dried your slides, you go ahead and you put um, you know, a drop of water um, or the broth, and then you mix it in with your bacteria and then smear the bacteria all over your slides, let it air dry, um, heat fix, and then you can go ahead and start adding your primary stain. And the primary stain, uh, we usually go with malachite green. Um, so it's going to stain your cells green in color. Um, and it's also going to stain the endospore uh, green in color. The thing is, uh, the endospore has a really thick, tough layer um, to allow it to withstand those harsh conditions, right? So uh, the mordant is going to be heat. So we take the slide that has the malachite green on it, and we go ahead and we place it on a hot water beaker, and this hot steam is going to act as the mordant to help you know, the malachite green to penetrate deep into the cell, deep into the endospore. Um, after we leave it on the hot water beaker for about five minutes, we go ahead and we decolorize. We basically rinse the slide with water. And you can rinse it, you know, as much um, as you want with, you know, as much water as you want. And the water is going to help wash off the malachite green from the bacteria cell, but not from the endospore. So the endospore is not going to lose the malachite green color. Um, it's going to retain that green color. And the reason why it's because, as I said, the endospore has a really tough outer shell. So once that malachite green has penetrated into the endospore, it's not coming out, you know, because it's, uh, as I said, the shell is really tough. So it's not an easy task to wash off, you know, the dye out of the spore. So, um, but when you rinse it with water, the malachite green is going to be rinsed off uh, the cell itself, okay, the bacteria cell itself. So then we go ahead and we add a secondary dye, 
and that would be saffronin. And so saffron has a reddish, um, it's basically reddish in color. We leave on the saffronin on our slide for about 45 seconds and then we rinse with water. Now, uh, which part of the cell will absorb the saffronin? The bacteria cell itself, but not the endospore. So you're gonna end up with a red bacteria cell with an endospore that's green in color. So, and then here again, um, just the steps. So you prepare the smear. After you've prepped your smear, you flood your smear with malachite green. You place your slides on the hot water beaker. The hot steam is gonna help the malachite green penetrate into the cell, penetrate into the endospore, if there are any endospores. Um, and then you rinse it off with water. Now the water is going to rinse off the malachite green um, from the bacteria cell, but not from the endospore itself. And then so for us to be able to see the bacteria cell, we add a counter um, stain, um, and that would be saffronin. And saffronin is going to go ahead, as you guys can see, it's going to stain the cell itself, but it's not going to stain the endospore. So the endospore will remain green, and that's because the endospore um, never lost the malachite green, so it's rich, saturated with that green color. And so when you add the saffron, it's only going to be accepted by the bacteria cell itself. So if your bacteria is producing endospores, it's going to look something like this. And as I said, Bacteria are triggered to produce endospores when they are old or when they are facing harsh conditions. And that's how it's going to look like, you know, the virtual uh, lab that you're going to go ahead and perform. And as I said, we like to put things in order. So first it would be the malachite green. And then, um, you know, that second bottle is showing you the the secondary counter stain, which is the saffronin. Um, so again, go through the virtual lab to help you out. Now the second special stain we're gonna talk about is the capsule stain. And um, a capsule is that layer that you would find around um, some bacteria. Um, it would be found on top of their cell wall. So again, not all bacteria have capsules um, to perform a capsule stain, we usually do a combination of a negative stain, which is going to stain the background, and then a direct or a positive stain, which is going to stain the cell itself. Now, um, the very first step is to go ahead, prep your smear, but with a capsule stain, we do not heat fix. So when you're prepping your smear, skip the step of heat fixing. Um, after you prep your smear, uh, we do a negative stain. Um, so we use either nigrosin or India ink, and those are acidic dyes that are going to stain the background. And then um, we add a second dye, and this dye will add uh, will be accepted by the bacteria cell itself uh, because we use um, a positive dye or a basic dye basically and so we can go with crystal violet um, and so um, the no heat fixing as I said in this procedure okay so what is the end result the end result is right here see how because we use nigrosin the background is really dark because we stained the background using nigrosin and then we stained the cell itself right here on the inside with crystal violet um, now, if you see a halo um, right here around the bacteria cell, that's going to indicate the presence of capsules. If you don't see a halo, then there are no capsules. And so, um, again, after you prep your smear, um, or actually here, I'm actually showing you the steps, okay? so. I'm showing you even the steps of how to perform the smear itself. So the very first step for a capsule stain procedure is to go ahead and prep your smear. So how do we prep our smear? We add a drop of the nigrosin dye. So it's kind of like the same steps as the negative stain that we talked about, right? 
So you're performing the exact same steps as negative stain. So you add a drop of the nigrosin dye, and then um, you transfer a loop full of bacteria into your dye. If you're getting it from um, a broth, then we usually add a loop full of bacteria into our dye. And then we use a clean slide to spread it across the slide. Um, and then leave your smear to air dry for five minutes and then do not heat fix. Okay, um, once you've left it to air dry, your smear is ready. So to that smear, you're going to add your primary dye, which is the crystal violet, which is going to stain the cell itself. Um, and then you rinse it with water. Um, so, and then you blot dry and you view it under the microscope. So we've stained the background, okay? And then we've also stained the bacteria cell itself. If there is a capsule stain, um, capsules don't accept, um, you know, the dyes pretty well. So they're gonna stay um, unstained. And so it's gonna look like a halo around the bacteria cell. Um, and again, you're going to have a virtual lab to try it out to help you again with the capsule staining uh, procedure. Um, there are also a few videos that would be helpful for you to watch. And then, of course, you know, going through the virtual lab, this is all, you know, um, extra help um, to help you out, um, you know, with these uh, procedures, the endospore and the capsule stain. Um, there are a bunch of results right here that I want you guys to look at to help you out answer the questions. So um, this is an endospore result. So um, notice how the bacteria, okay, is exactly the same, Bacillus subtilis. Um, the only difference between those two is this is a young culture and this is an old culture. Can you tell which one is producing the endospores? Is it the young or is it the old? And then right here you have um, two different types of bacteria and we've performed the capsule stain on those two. So can you tell which one has the capsule? Again, look for the one that has the halo around the bacteria cell. 